Uh, okay, hello. I will crack on, I think. Um, where should we start? Me. I'm Ben. Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Um, I work for a company called Cloudway. Um, these are my details, and I'm supposed to put my MVP logo up on the slide, but I don't have one, so instead I put a copy, or a picture of the front cover of a book that I've written instead. That's my, that's my self-promotion that we've got there. Um, I am here to talk to you about Teams phone system and some of the choices you can make to bring telephony into your Teams environment. But first, I want to do a little bit of kind of level setting. Um, first of all, how many people have got telephony deployed with Teams, Teams Find System at the moment? So what are you doing here? You, you, you've gone through this cycle, right? You, you, all, you all know what you're, what you're doing. Um, the level setting I wanted to do is a little bit about what we mean by a call inside Teams. You know, with Teams on your, your phone, on your mobile device, it could be... I've just realized what's happening here. My, my slide has auto timing on. <laughs> and it is, uh, it is animating by itself. This is going to be tricky. I'm going to gonna have to talk quickly. OK. Let's, let's, let's go for this again. So a Teams call can be, can be a couple of things, right? It could be that you are signed in on your mobile device, on your PC, and you are making a call to another PC or mobile device. Or it could be that you're in a meeting room calling between meeting rooms, or from a meeting room calling a user, or a user calling a meeting room. Um, it could also be that we are doing dial-in to a meeting, or it could be that we are doing dial-out from a meeting. Those three things that I talked about, about a Teams call to me, that is when you are on a Teams device logged in as your user, making a call to something else logged in as a Teams user. That could be a user in another company, whatever. That is a Teams call. A Teams meeting is when you are doing something with more than two people, right, where you have... Excuse all the, <laughs> the carrying is on. Um, that is where you have more than two people. And then calling Teams phone is when you're making a call where one portion of that is out onto the PSTN network, you know, the global telephony network that, that we all know and love. Um, so what I am talking about here is, in the lovely pink circle here, the telephony portion of that. I'm not talking about dialing in and dialing out of meetings. To me, that's kind of part of the meeting workload, because you enable it when you enable audio conferencing as part of your Teams meeting configuration. Um, incidentally, thanks to Mark for this lovely color scheme of blue and pink, and we get a little bit more lurid as we, as we go through here. But what we're going to dig into is the, the telephony aspect, right? Now, how many people used to do telephony inside Skype for Business? There was a lot of things you had to do there, right? There was SPCs that you had to deal with. There was gateways. Well, SPCs are gateways. There was SIP trunking. There was ISDN. There was phone systems. There was a lot of integration. The good news is that in Teams, you can, if you want to, still get into those weeds and into that nitty-gritty, but actually there are some choices that make it much, much simpler. There are a few turnkey solutions so that you can just kind of go and say, I want to do telephony, calling inside Teams, telephony, Teams phone system, um, turn it on and off you go. Those three choices that we're going to look at today are split into roughly calling plans, something called direct routing, where you can bring your own technology, and that's where, if you want to, you can get into those weeds and, and build complicated systems and solutions that are customizable and meet every requirement that you have. And there's a third option, which is Operator Connect. Um, digging into them, we're going to start with calling plans. So why would you want to choose a calling plan? The main reason is for convenience. Um, a calling plan you can buy as part of your Office 365 subscription. You can just purchase a license. comes as part of your, your billing for however you bill for Office 365. You turn it on, and it's there. Um, you manage everything through Teams Admin Center. It's all nice and straightforward, and it's simple. But there are some things you have to consider, because Microsoft is your carrier in that situation. Okay, So you need to look at what countries they are able to offer services in. Now, that list, when it first came out, was you know 16 countries, something like that. Then more got added. Then more got added. Um, I've got a slide that we'll, we'll come to in a second that shows you, just at a glance, what countries it's in at the moment. It's actually quite a, quite a large number. Anybody want to guess now what the current country coverage for, for calling plans is? 120. 120, no. <laughs> Way over the top, sir. <laughs> no, sorry, what was that? 68. 68? No, not quite. Well, there we go. Spoiled by my auto advance. 
Um, it is 31 countries natively supported by calling plans, and there are two, Australia and Japan, that are supported through um, third-party carriers. So in Australia, that's a relationship with Telstra, and in Japan, that's a relationship with, um, with SoftBank. I did used to have a nice animated globe on this slide where we had, with the help of Graham over there, we'd got a nice little 3D turning circle with little dots on all the countries. I gave up on that because the list started, started growing too, too much. Um, the other thing that you should consider when looking to use Microsoft is the licensing. Um, the licensing can be a little bit inflexible. Again, we'll talk, talk about that in a second. And the last one is interoperability. You know, if you need to be able to do anything slightly flexible, calling plans might not necessarily be, be for you. So from a licensing point of view, it comes in different flavors. You can have a domestic calling plan, you can have an international calling plan, and you can have a domestic and international calling plan. And some of those come in their own variants, right? So you can get a small, a medium, and a large. That dictates how many numbers you have, or sorry, how many minutes you have for, for your users. And I say users because those licenses pool. And they pool by license type, and they pool by geography. So that means if you have a user in the UK who has a domestic only plan, and you have 10 of them, you have 10 times that pool of minutes to use. But if you have an 11th user who is on domestic and international, they're in their own pool. It doesn't pool because they're not on the same license type. Okay? So you have to consider what sort of calling your users are, are going to be making. Now there is a whole other wormhole, rabbit hole that we can go down, which is about um, communications credits, where you can license for other calls outside of your domestic calling bundles if you want to in different ways. All I'll sort of say at this point about license thing is you just need to, to have a good awareness of what sort of minutes, what sort of calling you do, and try and map that against the number of users you've got. You know, it, it's, not a, it's not a very flexible system. You might find that it works great for your use case, or you might find that actually you're paying quite a bit more than some of the other options that, that we're going to talk about. But bear in mind it's the convenience factor. That license is part of whatever you're paying for 365, and it's there, and you're using it, and you're done. So it might be what you need to do a pilot, or a proof of concept, or a small deployment, or hey, it might fit for your large deployments, you might get better rates on, on things. Um, the other thing is you have to have your numbers provided by or through Microsoft. Okay? Now at the moment, chances are Microsoft isn't your carrier because Microsoft business you know, isn't really being a trunking provider or an ISDN provider. That's not what they do. They have relationships with vendors in all these different countries who provide their calling plan services. But essentially, to have your numbers consumed through calling plans, you need to port your numbers to Microsoft or you need to take new numbers from Microsoft. Now, they, they have a lot of coverage. You can go in the portal if you've got a calling plan license and you can say, I want a new number and I want it in London. I want it in Durham. I want it in Newcastle. I want it in um, you know, Bristol. There's a whole bunch of different places all around the world you know, in those locations and then split down by by town and city in those countries. If that's not okay, Microsoft have a pretty smooth porting process, actually. Have many people done number porting before? Has it been easy? No, probably not. The, the porting that I've done to Microsoft has been some of the smoothest that, are, that are, you know, is possible for that porting process. For anybody that doesn't know, basically fill in a form that says, this is my old carrier, this is authorizing these number ranges, it has to be done in blocks unless you know, in the US you can do individual numbers, it varies by, by parts of the world. Um, and it goes through a clearinghouse that checks all the data and tells the, the new carrier, like, yes, you, 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 know, you can take those over and the old one has to give them up and it happens at some point during a day and it's, it's painful. The Microsoft porting process is, has to fit inside those regulations and those rules, but it used to be that if there was a problem with the porting process, you would just be told no, and you'd have to go back and redo your paperwork. The Microsoft porting team are actually very good at helping you understand what was wrong with your porting request and why it was rejected. Um, or, hey, you take new numbers. But those of us who work with Telephony know that companies and users can be very precious about what's printed on their business cards and what is their number. So chances are you're probably going to have to do, do some porting at some point. The other method that we can use is direct routing. Um, direct routing is a way of bringing your own trunks into Teams. Now, I say trunks because in, in the diagram that we've got here, you have to have some form of SBC, and that has a connection up to Teams. The SBC, or from Teams' point of view, doesn't care what the other connection is down the other side there. It could be analog connections, FXS, FXO lines. Um, it could be ISDN. It could be SIP trunks. Could 
could be Toyota, or Mitel PBX, could be whatever. Teams doesn't care about that. The bit that Teams cares about is the connection to the, the cloud. The benefit of doing direct routing is it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can choose how you want to deploy and consume and use direct routing. Now, flexibility is broken down into several components. That could be by carrier. It could be in terms of the SBCs that you're choosing to use. It could be in terms of integrations with third-party contact centers, some of which need to have hooks through the SBC to manipulate the media to do whatever they need to do. Or some of them, like Landis or Luware or some of the others out there, operate on the cloud and work with all of these solutions. You know, it depends. And then lastly, you've got some options around how you deliver that service and that solution into your environment. So carrier choices, because Teams doesn't care what's on the other side of that SBC, if you're locked into a three, four, five year contract that is a good rate, or you can't move out of without paying a penalty, you can keep that connection and still take those numbers and that calling into Teams through that direct routing connection. Um, or you can mix and match providers. If you need to have coverage in the US and your provider doesn't do it, go and find another provider in the US that can and glue that into your, your direct routing setup. If you want to have different carriers in all different portions of the world, great. You have the ability to, to choose and, and chop and change and switch to, to meet what your needs are as a business. There are choices of gateways. There are certified gateways that go through the process of being qualified to be used with direct routing. The main two would be audio codes or uh, ribbon, arguably. Um, but again, you've got choices out there, and you, you see more vendors coming to the, the party. So Cisco, um, you know, have some of their kit as, as qualified. Um, was it Oracle as well are on the list? Sorry? Let you guess. Let me guess, no. <laughs> you nasty, nasty man. Um, but each of those vendors you know, yes, they, they have to do the core stuff. They have to be able to talk to teams in a particular way. They have to support Ice Light and these other codecs and protocols and bits and pieces. But some of them handle things in different ways. You know, if you're looking at this from a global deployment point of view, how are you going to do failover routing? Is there a management platform that will handle call routing across those SBCs and reroute calls when things fail? So, you know, it's not just go and pick a vendor off the list and look at the price. It's look at those management wrappers and those other activities that go alongside that to make your life easier if you're deploying it yourself, which we will come on to. Um, this is also the best way of doing integration. You know, with an SBC, an SBC is a voice router. Um, you know, it sits at the middle of your voice network, effectively, and it can talk to your ISDN phone system. It can talk to your analog devices. It can talk to your Waybridges, your lifts, if you want it to. You probably don't, but that's another, that's another story. You know, it, it provides the glue that sticks all of these telephony components that you've got together and then lets you send that up to Teams. It also allows you to do a neat migration. You know, with a number port, you cut from one system to the new system, to, you know, from whatever, wherever your numbers were delivered to wherever you're pointing them, if it's into Teams or into a SIP trunk against a gateway. With an SBC, you can start doing clever things like put your SBC in, configure it to talk to Teams, configure it to talk to your old phone system, and then through rules on that SBC, you can now say Bob's number now goes to Teams. Alice's number still goes through to the phone system. You, you've got some degree of control. And you can still choose to migrate people by hopefully not individual numbers, because otherwise your regex rules on that, room, that gateway will become very complex, or you get into complex AD-based routing. It is possible. doesn't mean you necessarily want to do it. Um, and that feeds into control again. This stuff is, you know, it, sometimes they are your gateways. You have the ability to go onto them, to look after them, to make sure they're operating in the way that you, that you need them to operate, and you can see everything that's happening with them if you choose to deploy them yourself. Which brings me on to delivery choices. So direct routing, you can run it yourself. You can go and buy SBCs. You can go and buy virtual SBCs. You can even choose to run them in Azure if you want to. But there is also a model of direct routing which a partner can host for you. So they can build you know, big gateways at scale with SIP trunks to whoever their providers and their carriers are at scale and allow you to consume a portion of that service. Okay. So just when we're talking about direct routing, that doesn't mean it has to be you with your gateways. It can be, but it could also be that you are using someone else's direct routing gateways. Which brings us on to Operator Connect. Operator Connect wasn't available at the times, stop it, at the times that Teams launched. Um, Operator Connect 
is a way of kind of bridging the gap between the benefits of calling plans and the benefits of, of direct routing. You will find that large carriers are going down the operator connect rate, that's hence the name operator, you know, the big global telco operators, but there are smaller players kind of coming along as Microsoft's opening up the, the, um, the, the requirements there and the process for getting onboarded. The main reason that you might want to choose operator connect is a balance between those two things, right? So with calling plans, you had that convenience of doing it all through the team's admin center, but that also includes your number management. It's not just the licensing. You know, when you have calling plans, you can see the numbers, you can see who they're allocated to, um, you can see who's got what. With direct routing, because Teams doesn't care about the stuff on the other side of the SBC, what you do is you configure routes and you know, online voice policies against your users that say when they make a call, send it to that gateway, and you tell Teams what the number is. But Teams doesn't know if that number is part of a range of 20, part of a range of 100, or you know that you've got a, a number of other numbers in your environment. So Operator Connect is designed to bridge that gap where you can go and take services from a carrier of your choice who is certified and on the program for Operator Connect. You can see them in Teams Admin Center if you go in there. You can say, I want coverages in these locations, and it will tell you which Operator Connect, stop it, partners. Um, will will serve you in those areas. Um, so again, back to that um, convenience portion. You know, it might be if you've got contracts with an existing telco that you're locked into with your your on-prem equipment. If that provider is also an Operator Connect provider, they might be able to swap you over onto their Operator Connect package rather than having to you know cease and take up. You might find some of them you know force you that actually it's a change in contract and blah blah blah. Um, but you get that balance of convenience management through through admin center and the flexibility of like because that is a carrier providing services at scale they can be doing other clever things behind the scenes that you don't need to worry about you can have coverage in locations that Microsoft aren't able to provide services themselves you can mix and match operator connect providers you know you, you don't have to take services from any one provider and incidentally all of the three methods that we're talking about here it's worth noting that from an end user perspective, it looks and feels the same, right? That user has a dial pad in their team's client. They can make a call, they can receive a call, they can do all of the functionality that you enable. It doesn't matter what the, the method of delivery is behind the scenes. So the same thing with Operator Connect. You can have three or four Operator Connect providers in your tenant, and you can still manage them through, through the admin center. So it's that sort of balance of, of both of those two worlds. Um, in terms of trying to decide which of these you, you might want to go for, um, try to do a, a, a few sort of decision trees that show the, the very basic decisions that you might want to make. So first of all, does Microsoft provide coverage in your region? If the answer is no, you're going to have to go for Operator Connect and Direct Routing. You, you don't have a choice, OK? If Microsoft does provide coverage, is the licensing cost OK? Does it work for you? Does that model of pooling and everything like that fit? If it doesn't, you need to do direct routing and operator connect. Do you need to have any interop with any other equipment? Because again, with Microsoft, it's their service is running out of their environment. You know, you don't have any, any choice. You can't hang other stuff off the back of that. If you do have interop requirements, Again, you need to look at direct routing and operator connect. If not, calling plans might be what you're looking for. How do you pick between direct routing and operator connect? Do you have a requirement to manage your own SBCs and your own connections to those SBCs? Do you need to be in control of exactly when media is going around your network? If the answer is yes, then you need to look at direct routing because that is where you can deploy your own gateways, you can deploy your own things, and it's all yours. You, you have to look after it, but that comes at a, a management price, right? Um, if not, does, is there an Operator Connect provider who has a good price and gives you the coverage that you need? Incidentally, Operator Connect, all of the commercials happen outside of Teams and Microsoft's remit, right? Microsoft's remit with the Operator Connect program is the interoperability and the glue that you know gets the provider's calls between their environment and yours. How you pay for that, how it's billed, how the minute bundles look is all down to that particular carrier and whatever their agreements are. So when you go into TAC and you say, I want a relationship with this provider, they will need to contact you, set up an agreement and say, yes, they're part of our system before that can then start working. If you have coverage and cost, great, go Operator Connect. If not, you need to do direct routing. 
between direct routing, how do you choose which of those delivery methods you might want to look at? Do you have any legal requirements that re mean you have to have breakout connectivity in a particular country? You know, do you, for in, in example, in India, you have to have PSTN breakout happen in the region that the user is? If so, you need to make sure you have gateways deployed in that region to meet that requirement. Now, little asterisks that could be the provider will look after and support a gateway to do that for you, but generally you would do that yourself. What about weighing up the management costs versus the actual cost of the solution? Can you find a partner who can do it in a cost-effective manner that you're happy with? Great, go with them. If not, you can do it yourself. Now, the last sort of thing to bear in mind is the responsibilities of who the key players are that are responsible for making all of this stuff work. So across the top are the things that have to be lined up to make you know, to allow a user to make a call. Teams has to be running. The Teams application has to be available and on a device. You have to have internet connectivity to, to connect to the team service, asterisk unless you're using an SBA. Shut up. Um, you have to have some form of a gateway, depending on the scenario. There has to be a connection to Office 365 from that gateway, and there has to be some form of upstream connectivity to the PSTN provider. So you can see with calling plans, it looks really straightforward. You've got Microsoft on the line, you're on the line, and the ISPs on the line, but that's kind of it. Whereas as you come down, if you're doing it self-hosted, Microsoft, you, you, the ISP, you, you, you. There's a lot more stuff that's on you as the end customer that you have to manage and look after. Whereas cloud-hosted, Actually, we're slightly more complicated again because where the SBC is hosted, if it's in Azure, Microsoft Azure has to be working, so there's a little bit on them as well. But there's bottom one here, partner hosted um, direct routing or operator connect. You know, you can see the partner has got their neck on the line for all or for more of those components. You still need to provide the client and you still need to make sure that client has good internet connectivity to be able to have a successful call, but everything else is down to the partner. So again, you know, it depends what your relationship with a partner is like, how much that's going to cost, how much you want to be in charge of that, and that's stuff yourself. In terms of how you might approach a deployment for this, there's kind of four phases that you might want to go through. Step one is gathering your information. You know, what numbers do you have in what locations with what users? What other things hook into your phone system? There is always other things that hook into your phone system. We talked a little bit about it might be way bridges. It could be emergency calls, you know, need to be made out of a lift for legal reasons. Some of those things, like that one in particular, I would suggest you don't put inside Teams because for that to be able to operate in an emergency emergency scenario, you need to make sure that your routers are available in event of a power cut, all those things. Just put a POTS line, a plain old telephony line, into that lift to support that scenario. Take it outside of the team's you know, UC bubble. Once you've got your information, you can then look at doing a pilot deployment. You know, how does it look and feel? How does it work? How does it seem OK? And this is where calling plans, I'm not saying they're not great for the other scenarios, but this is where calling plans really shines, that it's super easy to go and buy some calling plans, give some users some phone numbers, and test it, play with it, see how it looks, see how it feels. Um, you also need to plan your migration. You know, are we having to do number porting? How are we going to put an SBC in? Are we changing between providers? What's that going to look like? How are we going to message that to, to the users? And this is a cycle as well. And it's a cycle not just in terms of the deployment phases that you go through, where it might be that you do these users from this office, then these users from this office, or this country, then this country, then this country. You also need to make sure that it, you go and look at the data that's coming back from your usage in Teams. And this is where tools like CQD come into play, Call Quality Dashboard. You go in there and you look and you make sure that people are able to make calls, that they're of a sufficient quality, and that everything is, is working right. So make sure that it's, you know, you approach this as a as a cycle. It's not that you do the deployments and you walk away. You know, you do a cycle and that cycle is through your migrations but also into your post migration reviews and processing to make sure everything looks okay. So that brings me to, to the end. Are there any very brief questions? Otherwise, I'm available afterwards.